morning everyone today I'm gonna read this paper Actomycin controls planarity and folding of epistereal in response to compression written by Graham so basically let's read this abstract together throughout embryo development and adult life epistereal are subject to compressive deformations while these have been shown to trigger mechanosensitive response such as cell extrusion and differentiation, which span tens of minutes, little is known about how epistereria adapt to compression over shorter time scales. Here, using suspended epistereria, we uncover the immediate response of epistereal tissue to the application of in-plane compressive strains. We show that fast compression induced tissue buckling followed by ectomycin dependent tissue flattening that erase the buckle within tens of seconds in both mono and multilayer epistereal. Strikingly, we identify a well-defined limit to this response so that stable folds form in the tissue when compressive strain exceeds the buckling threshold of 35%. A combination of experiment and modeling shows that this behavior is orchestrated by adaptation of ectomycin skeleton as it establishes tissue detention following compression. Thus, tissue pretension allows epistereal to both buffer against deformation and sets their ability to form and retain force during the buffogenesis. Here, previous finding about compression is that compression can induce cell extrusion and differentiation you know, tens of minutes, but little is, not, little is known about how this compression changed the epistereal within shorter time scale, like tens of seconds. Here, how they do, they are making this device, and they are culturing epistereal cell, and then this epistereal cell can grow like this. Without substrate, also they can maintain their sheet structure. So, after forming this cell sheet, epistereal sheet, they change their device into this area, which can cause compression. And then, they measure this compressed strain. After substrate this original value to this value, and then. They also measuring this sheet length. So this is called buckling. This is flat, it's buckling. And then they measure how this buckling could be flattened over time. Here, they change 35% from original to the finer. When they change, what happened? Original time, 2 second, 35, 300 second. Over time, it's buckling, it disappearing, which means they are flattened. But when this compression strain is over a certain threshold, this buckling is maintained. And then this yellow, actually this 35 and 50 percent, they immediately change their compression strain within one second. But in terms of 80%, when they change 80% of strain in one second, this epithelial sheet is, is ruptured. So they gradually change their compression strain. And then they found out that they buckling, their buckling is not disappearing. So this is their quantification. Even though the device strain is changed immediately, and sustain the tissue is followed. Tissue strain continuously followed. And then this strain is maintained a little bit. When tissue strain is maintained at zero without any change, and then this total length this buckling is maintained, but 
when this T strain is decreased near to this device strain, which means that this original strain strength, original length, come to be buckling, and then later they are flattened. When they are flattened, the finer length is shorter than original one, and then should be similar to yellow. So these two graphs should meet together. But when this strain is over a certain threshold, this tissue didn't meet this yellow line, which means that their buckling is maintained because this, this length is larger than yellow. So they are maintaining their buckling. And then they check when they change the compression strain fast, like one second or few tens of seconds, there's no change of buckling threshold in MDCK, the cell line, another cell line, HCAT, HCAT. So, and then bottom line, the definition of the buckling threshold is over this threshold here, the T strain can meet the device strain, which means this epithelial buckling it is, can disappear. But over this threshold, below this one, tissue cannot flatten equal to device, equal to this line, this length. F is, graph is based on this 80%. When device gradually change their strain, narrower, more and more, but tissue strain cannot follow. So buckling is maintained. This is from another cell, HACAT. And the major difference between MDCK and HACAT is MDCK is relatively single layer, but HACAT is multi-layer. You can see you, there are two nucleus on the layer. So even single layer and multi-layer, similar thing happen. 35% they are flattened, but 50 or 80% do, do not flat are not flattened. So regardless of cell line and single and multi-layer, the buckling threshold is around 35%. Next, they they want to check uh, what kind of thing, what kind of component are changing while they are compressed in plane compressed. So this is their original, original status. When they are compressed 30%, definitely x-axis is continuously decreasing, right? Over tissue strain. Tissue strain means when your tissue is compressed. And then y-axis is maintained, okay? And g-axis is more heightened okay and then when they measure the volume in supplementary volume is the same which means that their total volume is maintained like viscoelastic or elastic material so and then as you can imagine how this kind of flattening from buckling to flattening can be induced. We already know that cells have ectomyosin contraction, which means actin, myosin, they contract each other to make the force to, to attract together. So they treat blevistatin, ectomyosin contraction inhibitor. They found out that previously what happened? This buckling can be disappearing. But under blevistatin, buckling is maintained in MDCK and HACAT. But this regulatory quantification control is like that. They, their strain, strain is, this means they are more flattened. And then Cal Y, this is, 
yeah, calculin A. Calculin A, simply you can imagine this is ectomycin contraction activator. When they're activated, this strain is more decreasing, which means that they are more flattened. But on the blevistatin, the strain is relatively not shortened, which means buckling is maintained. So they measure the buckling threshold from very different inhibitor and activator. They found out that under this inhibitor, ectomycin inhibitor, the buckling threshold is dramatically increasing. While when they activate ectomycin contraction, they are more decreasing. So we can say that buckling threshold is relatively related to the ectomycin contraction force. And then this phenomenon can be observed similarly in half cut, double layer cell line, multi layer cell line. This is relatively single, while you can see many two or three layer here, half cut. The tissue flattening is achieved through myosin dependent cell shape change. Next, as you as you can imagine, ectomycin contraction can cause tension force. So literally, they want to measure tension. Here is tension sensor, original, like that, and then they cut. When they substrate this and this value, you can get the stress. So this is called pre-tension. While they are forming the sheet, what, how much of pre-tension are applied along the epithelial sheet. Control around 300 Pascal when you add it. The ectomycin activator enhance around 400. Under ectomycin inhibitor, they are below 100 Pascal. So tension can, we, we can vary tension by chemicals. Okay, and next, here we can change the strain. So, what is yellow means that we compress the sheet from 0 to 60%. While we are decreasing this, we are, we are compression, compressing the cell sheet. They dynamically measure the tissue stress. When you track this yellow, this is exactly the same, this direction, where, while this sheet, sheet is compressed, this direction you can see tissue stress is gradually going down and then after this stress at this point they are flat -tuned. so this is one of the turning point and interestingly this turning point is similar to the buckling stress source value around 33 percent and then when they change strain back to normal, like even 20% extension, and then they exactly follow this, this line, and then when they again make the compression force, compression change, also they follow this similar line. So which means that regardless of initial or dynamic or compression extension period, this slope change turning point doesn't change. So that's why this, also this is called buckling threshold. So from stress, from figure one and two, and then from shape, the shape change analysis, buckling threshold are same each other. So we can say that this is very typical characteristic of the epithelial sheet. And then they measure the how much of stress can be recovered over different change of compression. So 5% compression up to 50% compression initially from the original tension, initial tension force, they are decreasing. And then they are continuously increasing a flat shoot. But over 
certain compression strain, 40 and 50 percent, they are very low stre stress recovery, which means that they are losing the power to recover back to the shortened length. Let's imagine when this cell sheet maintains this tension, this buckling is continuously under contract, contract tension, so that can be flattened. But over 40 or 50 percent of compression strain, this recovery fraction is very low, so this buckling cannot be flattened. Why? tension force among the cell sheet. <clears throat> and then, this is their correlation curve. Fraction of stress recovery is y-axis. Yeah. From this down, how much is recovered? Okay. When they are more recovered, almost original one, and then the device strain to induce compression is very low. But over time, around 33 or 35, you can also see the similar value to buckling threshold. The fraction of stress recovery we cannot see at all. So that is why we cannot see the buckling disappearing to the flattened cell sheet. So pretension buffer against compression to prevent still buckling of epithelia, which means that, in other words, pretension is key for taking back buckling to flatten cell sheet. And then here, they want to simulate this phenomenon using viscoelastic model. This is very well-known viscoelastic model. This is, this is spring, spring and dash pond model. So initially, the elastic property is major when something, something changes. And then, from this uh, viscose part, dash part, can have, a reaction, can have reactivity. So here, device is changed. Initially, this cell sheet follow the elastic property. And then, after a certain threshold, this dash part is working. So they are like that, and then when this device trends go back to normal, they follow the, the elastic part. So here, and then device train, actually this cell sheet, as I said, their significant strain change is up to 40 or 33%. This is their maximum, their original characteristic. Over this strain compression, the tissue cannot change. Okay? And then they can go back. And when you imagine this status, when they're coming, when this tissue is going down, this buckling is a little bit flattened. And then over this device strain is more compressed, this buckling is maintained. So like that. Initially here, and after making buckling, but they try to flatten. But this substrate, they are compressed more and more, so this buckling is maintained. And then when the substrate is enlarged to the original state, this buckling is also flattened. So this kind of observation and simulation, we can see they are very similar. And then they also check the memory of the cell sheet. This immediately changed their strain near to broken threshold. And six minutes later, they go back. And initially, immediately, they do again. But here, for cycle three, they wait six minutes and do again. What happened? Cycle one, yeah, they are they can relatively flattened, right? Because this is over the threshold. So the buckling is maintained, but they are more flat flattened than before. But when they go back to cycle immediately, this 
what happened? This is going down. This buckling is little, the shape is little, little disappearing. Not similar to original one. But after waiting 60 minutes, cycle 3, exactly same to cycle 1, which means that cycle 1 and 2, there is no gap between these two cycles, which means they, this cell sheet has some memory. We can call it this is stress relaxation. So the viscose part, viscose part is maintained. This is cycle one and two. So that is why this this buckling is more disappearing. So this experiment is depicted like this. Cycle one and two. You can see more. Oh. Uh, more flattened behavior can be observed in cycle 2 because of the physical elastic property of the tissue. But be be between cycle 1 and 3, they are similar because for this waiting time, this cell sheet, physical elastic part is disappearing, is recovered, you can say they recovered. So they can be a normal state, normal original status. And then this experiment and simulation using this elastic and viscoelastic model, we can model them. Similar to both, both experiment and simulation. And at the last, they want to model the they want to make some formula about buckling threshold. So this is their original pretension to the epithelial tissue control. And then Ectomycin activator, we can enhance the tension force. On the inhibitor, we can decrease. And then using this device strain and stress curve, we can calculate the Young's modulus from this slope. slope. And then we can show that here. Slope absolutely higher in Carl Y. Control here, second. Another one, they are very low slope. And then they make this value minus original pretension over elastic modulus, Young's modulus. And then they make this kind of tendency. This is highly ectomizing contraction, normal, less contraction. We can see this graph. And then this is very similar to the buckling threshold. So we can, we can make some formula to predict the buckling threshold using the cell sheet stiffness and then their pretension. We simply imagine how buckling threshold can be formed. Actually, there is not much of parameter to mediate this buckling threshold. So one of them is stiffness, and the other one is pretension. You can easily imagine. And the other parameter can be ruled out in supplementary. So let's briefly see the supplementary data. Here, actually, this buckling, uh, when, and another buckling we can see, wave buckling, especially when we change the compression in plane very fast. First mode is one buckling, second buckling is this, this wave like. So, they also report this phenomenon. And then, the buckling threshold, slow and fast, even we can see some little different phenotype, there is no change of buckling threshold. And then this is uh, there, how they, how they investigate the actin through apical and the basal level. Basal apical level, basal is more large diameter, apical level is more small diameter, you can, you can see. And then, this MDCK and HACCAT, they are very similarly behaved. And the injury HACCAT, up to buckling threshold, HACCAT change their compression, change their strain. And this is also very similar to the MDCK, 
over increase of strain, but only the tissue strain can be changed up to buccal threshold. And then, is there any relationship between apical cell, a, average apical cell area? There is no relationship. The people ask when there is certain change of this upper apical area. Maybe buccal threshold can correlate, but there is no correlation. Cell area doesn't affect the buccal threshold. And then, buccal threshold and flattening process half life is how this when you when your device is compressed, how fast this tissue comes to be flattened and half life. But there is no, no change. The the time between buckling to flatten is called flattening process half half life. No correlation. And then they interestingly how they um, make their assumption. This original after compression they artificially enlarge their image. And you can see they are very similar, which means that they are not changing their morphology that much. Only in short time, their volume is changed. So that is why G-axis enhance while axis is decreasing. Axis decreasing, G-axis enhanced. Like that, when they're compressed. And then this is after treating in lab B, uh, actin polymerase inhibitor. As you can imagine, the, the cell sheet doesn't change at all. And then Y27, similarly. And then when tissue strain rate is higher, which means the speed, how fast you can change the tissue. And then when you change the tissue strain, uh, relatively smaller tissue strain rate, tissue change speed very high they are quickly change but when tissue strain is too much too much change and then they are slowly slowly tissue come to be normal stage and then time scale time scale means how fast the buckling can be flattened this high pretension car y they need very small time but this lower ectomatic contraction inhibitor they need large amount of time a similar thing happened to hackat and then this dynamically also you can see there's no change of buckling threshold they do first second third time but buckling threshold doesn't change this flat shoot doesn't change. This turning point doesn't change. Didn't change. So we can say that this is typical feature of the epithelial sheet. So you can imagine over device strain rate, how fast you can change it. And that final device strain, depending on their ratio, sometimes the epithelial sheet can maintain the buckling or they can be flattened. And then, as in uh, main figure, this is recovery fraction. Original stress come to be decreased while the compression machine compressed. And then, while they compress, ectomatic contraction is working on and on. And then, they recover, try to recover their <coughs> stress a little bit. So, this is recovery fraction. So this recovery fraction is very lower than certain scale. This buckling cannot be flattened because they need certain force to be flattened. And this is the simulation from the viscoelastic spring dash pump model. And then they want to also here uh, difference in Young's modulus. Yeah, from the control 
Actor Match Contraction Activator or Deactivator Youngs Modulus Change Pretensions Change And then they found out that other parameter like uh, D is about intercellular junction So this Ekaterin junction didn't change that much depending on the, this inhibitor So we, ca we can solely say that this buckling threshold under compression is depending on the ectomycin contractility, not cell cell interaction. Because when you imagine, why actually not be one micromole that can induce loose loss of ecadrin, but in case of Y27, they are very intact. So we cannot explain the those phenomenon by the ecadrin. And affecting also, here, LAPB, actin act polymerase inhibitor, they losing the actin, but these all three are sharing similar phenomena. So actin, ecadrine, didn't affect the compression induced buckling flattening. Okay, thank you.